Welcome to What to Do When, a podcast from Real Lawyers with Real Perspective, where we explore a variety of legal issues and scenarios. Each week, we focus on a new topic and discuss what to do when and if any of these legal scenarios ever happen to you or a loved one. With over 40 years of combined legal experience, our hosts offer their unique perspectives and insights on a range of real life legal situations. Hi, and welcome back to What to Do When, a podcast here at Kreiser Cardani in Richmond, Virginia. What's on the docket for today, Jack? So today on the docket, we have what to do when your school age child gets in a fight at school. Ooh, that's happening more and more, isn't it? I mean, hasn't it sort of always happened? What's the movie? A Christmas Story? <laughs> yeah. Right. I mean, you, you see it all the time, whether it's a cartoon, these kids are you know, punching it out, no big deal. At least maybe it didn't used to be a big deal. Exactly. And that really is. Um, as we move into our current culture, these things are being more and more pushed to the court system, which is never good, always problematic. And you find yourself in a situation where when you were a kid and when I was a kid, maybe John and I were in a, a beef, we had it out, we fought in the backyard or we fought in somebody else's yard and that fight was over. We usually shook hands and it was over and you know you moved on in life. But now it's become quite simply a crazy event. There's protective orders that come out of it and all kinds of things. Well, okay. So are we talking about elementary school or lower school, middle school, high school? What are we, what are we, is there an age limit in other words for a fight to become a a court battle? Yeah. I mean, usually you're not going to get a kid before 11 getting in the court system unless it's really, really bad. And usually you're talking later junior high, um, into high school, but high school is where it really starts to tick up. Um, and you see a lot more kids getting charged and, you know, it's tends to be more boys than girls tends to be part of the pecking order of growing up. You get mad at somebody you haven't learned to channel your emotions as an adult yet. And, you know, before things happen, you're in a, in fisticuffs with somebody that, you know, maybe cooler heads, 10 years later would have prevailed and you just would have bought the guy a drink and moved on. But that's where we are. So does it matter really the, the injury that's sustained? I mean, does it matter what the punishment is at school? Can you think, so for example, let's start, let's start with one Uh, bloody nose versus busted orbital bone. I mean, you know, are we, are we talking about, it does matter, but really it used to be only the busted orbital bone, you know, would go to a court's, would go to the court, the school would handle it. They'd give somebody, you know, three days out of school. And as you know, now, and some schools are finally moving away from it, but one of the worst things, I don't care, I'm going to offend people, but zero tolerance is one of the stupidest things that ever come down Mm -hmm. the school pipe. And it's dumb because if Jackie came up and hit me and I hit her back, we'd both be out of school for the same amount of time. And it just doesn't make any sense. I mean, it's different if I was provoking Jackie for 45 minutes, you know, that makes a difference. But this whole zero tolerance things, and I think that's what led to this court system uptick where all these cases are getting pushed off the circuit court because now, or juvenile court because now they're a big deal. And remember, yes, it's juvenile court. Yes, it's probably not going to be part of your long term record. And if it's your first time and maybe your last Unless time. Unless you're a politician, then it'll probably come up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but you know, if it's your first time and maybe your last time, normally the courts it's a juvenile court. Their job is to try to bring a resolution to it, not to convict you and make you a criminal. And and for the most part the courts I work with are really good about that. You know, if you're a frequent flyer, as we say, that gets a little more dicey and a little more problematic. But You know, it goes back to all we've talked about before. Things are changing. And, you know, like I grew up, you know, if somebody hit you, you hit them back. That's just, you know, that was kind of like the standard. And now if you hit me and I hit you harder and I knock you out, I'm the bad guy. And I'm looking at charges. I'm looking at all those things. And it's our we've really flipped the script on this. And it's one of my really big pet peeves. If you don't hear my passion in this, because. I, to me, it's kind of like the soft skull argument. I, and I realize there's law out there. For those of you listening to me and knows the law, I realize that's what the law says about 
you know, there can be too much of a response. Well, but, uh, you take your, your victim, if you will, as you find them, right? But you also take the person you punch as you find them, and that's my argument. I mean, if you decide <laughs> to, to release... The bear. <laughs> well, I mean, you, trust me, if you decide to punch some guy who you don't have a clue what he knows or what he doesn't know or how strong he is or anything like that, because as you and I both know, the picture doesn't always paint the story, and he clobbers you, I'm, I'm sorry, You should have never, I mean, remember, the Constitution was built on the fact of self-restraint, self-reliant, being that person who, you know, life, liberty, and the pursuit of property, but it's under the guise that you own your own behavior, because it doesn't work if you don't. we're having this conversation, interestingly, maybe last night at dinner, and one of our children who goes to middle school indicated that there had been a fight at school. And the one one child was supposedly uh, expelled from school. But you know how it goes. It's a middle school. So yeah. is that right? But here's the story. The story is the kid who got expelled was the aggressor. He came up and either slapped and then punched the other kid who then somehow mm, hit him back, put him in a chokehold, threw him to the ground, whatever it was. But it was, a f- in my thought, it was a far more aggressive response of what some might call self-defense than the initial act. And so whether whether it was a slap and a punch and then he, she said he threw him to the ground and then had him in a chokehold when they came up. I don't, maybe he's a wrestler. I don't know. Um, But the kid who responded, I think suffered some sort of punishment, but not expulsion from the school. The next statement was really funny. She said, well, he, um, now he's going to be held back because he got expelled. (laughs) 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 No, that's not how that, that works. There are, other alternatives and because you have to go to school it's compulsory it's not optional you can't just take the year off of school i mean imagine how many kids would just never ever graduate because they were expelled (laughs) but so that's and so i bring that up because we've got an aggressor and we've got some self-defense and you know like you're saying some schools it's zero time it doesn't matter Mm -hmm. it doesn't matter who did what first you're both gone and then you've got this school where it sounds like only one kid really received the heavier punishment and it was the, the more aggressive child. But how do you know um, when to raise the issue of self-defense? How do you teach your when What do we do as, as parents in this society where we, maybe you don't know which kind of school you go to or maybe you do and you still want your kid to be able to say, you can't get away with this. You can't just walk up and hit me. It's it's the, I honestly believe we're in a crazy time in our society like never before excuse me and i really believe that and i'm very concerned for our children i've never been more concerned for our children than i am right now because of what's going on and people see it out there as these great things but we see it on the other side of the results of these great policies like zero tolerance seems like of course that's a good idea but Mm -hmm. when kids who aren't doing wrong are being punished what is that message that send to that kid x sends no matter what i do I'm going to be punished. So right. by gosh, I'm going to do it right. Or what's the point of telling on anybody because I'm going to be in trouble? You know, all those things have been taken out. All the sure. self-restraint pieces have been taken out because it's zero policy. Who cares? I mean, and, and I hear it. I have kids and I hear these kids talking and, I'm, and they're friends over and you go, yeah, I get that. And so, you know, then what we didn't even bring up. Okay, so the school punishes them. They refer it out to assault and battery to the juvenile court. And then the the parents of that kid, who may have been the aggressor, mm-hmm. is now asking for a protective order against that kid, which kicks in. Well, we, you've watched one of our prior podcasts. Protective Whoa. orders are really messy. And then on top of that, you have a juvenile who's not an adult trying to figure out this protective order and what he can do and what he can't do. And I know it seems pretty straightforward, but when you're a kid, it doesn't always hit your brain right. I mean, have you seen where two juveniles have... P- uh, protective orders against or one against another. Mm-hmm. My gosh, I, I feel like, I mean, imagine. So, just to lay out what you were talking about, you've got the 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 kid who threw the first punch. You got the responding kid, who maybe is a little more aggressive to tell the stop doing this. You can't do. I'm not going to be thrown in the trash can every day, mm-hmm. right? If we're going to really talk. And then now the original aggressor may be seeking a protective order against the kid who is operating in maybe self-defense. Yeah, and that's the oh, problem man. is nobody sees self-defense anymore. And that's a huge thing. And I know a lot of people out there think I'm crazy on this soapbox, but it really comes down to, for me, we can't 
operate right in a society where somebody's able to do whatever they want to you and your response is what we criminalize or what we punish. It doesn't make any sense. So again, I guess we're saying what to do when, and what I'm saying is we have to train our children not to respond, which is crazy talk. And I don't believe is right for society. I don't believe it's right for anybody. So basically the underlying lesson is just take it. Just Which, take. That is not, uh, that's not my position. Not my that's position not, <laughs> either. But. <laughs> but, but what you and your student may be facing is, is that, right? And then you come into, oh gosh, then there's the, oh, but there was a text message or there was an email or uh. there was a photograph or there were all these other things. And that's why we're in this fight. Well, now you're going to open the door to get one of our other podcasts about sharing pictures and, and doing other things that teenagers ought not do. So take a look in our juvenile criminal defense section uh, of our podcast and take a, take a listen to that. But they, they, these doors just keep opening, and it is causing more problems in the school, outside of the school. Let me ask you this. So, Can I add something? Yeah. I know you want to add, but this is really important, I think. People, protective orders. I want to explain this to you as a kid. So I got a protective order. Jackie has a protective order to me. I can't contact Jackie. All right. Tuesday night comes, and there's a party at Billy's, and everybody's in a group text, including Jackie. Guess what? Did I violate the protective order, Jackie? If you text, if you sent a text to that group, you did. Yes. Crazy talk. And kids do this stuff all the time. They're on these big group. My my kids, I hear that sometimes in the room, beep, 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 beep. <laughs> like, what is going on there? I got a group check. You know, so, right. you know, kids can, there can be a hundred kids in that group check, but if Jackie's in it and I text into it, the inference is because there's no communication even through a third party on right. a protective right. order. And then you got the other problem. They might be in the same school when they run into each. I mean, there's, it's just the litter, literal problems are so extreme and so problematic because Remember what happens in a violation of protective? It's an automatic day in jail or juvenile court. You start getting on, then the protective order gets continued for a year. And then it's extended. And all this stuff. I mean, it is like the argument. And quite frankly, sometimes kids, I'm not saying kids don't need to be punished. I'm not saying anything like that. But most of the time, the court's going to, a first offense is going to try to work it out with the kid, maybe take an anger management class, teach them how to work on some stuff. And that's all good. But what we're saying is, as a parent, as we instruct our kids, you know, and a lot of parents like my parents said, you know, if someone hits you, you have my permission to hit them back. And and I'm okay with that position, but you also got to know how the courts and how the school and how everybody else is viewing that. And they're not like me necessarily. And they're going to, all of a sudden your kid's going to be down a road and you're going to need to call us. And, you know, and, and that's okay, but you got to, we have to educate people. And I'll say this too. This is very, very important. We say every podcast, every place, you have no obligation to talk to the school if you were in a fight. Right. The best thing you can do at that point, they're probably going to expel you or do whatever they're going to do anyway. So just be quiet. Hmm. They're going to say you have to write a statement. Guess what? You don't have to write a statement. You have a constitutional right not to incriminate yourself. So don't say anything. So I'd rather not say anything. Thank you very much. Well, you have to. No, I don't. You know, because of this, because of the next steps, it's mm-hmm. so important. It used to be that you could make a statement at school. The school was handled. And maybe they gave you three days out of school and whatever, and it worked out. And, you know, you had an administrator who was willing to listen to the facts, weigh what was going on, and make a decision based on those facts, but with zero tolerance. Bye, Jackie. Bye, Scott. See you later. We'll see you in 10, 7, 10, 3, whatever the days right. are. And it doesn't create justice. It doesn't create fairness. It creates more tension. It, it ruins the school environment, all those things. So, you know, I, I know I'm being passionate and I understand that. Obviously, this touches my heart because I just find it so. I've been doing this for a long time. I handled the number of assault and batteries I've handled in my life. It's too many to count. And I really mean that. And it always amazes me that we have a very little concept about the context. And all we want to know is that Jackie hit me and that's enough. And Life's not like that. Life has context to it. And we have to be able to teach our kids there's context to things. But also teach our kids to stand up for themselves because that's so important. We don't I don't we don't want our kids to be doormats. We don't want our kids to be walking through life feeling like they have no place because that's really what the end result of zero tolerance is. Be a doormat. Well, and so on the flip side of this whole thing, is there a time when when a family should seek a protective order when a family should say, hey, wait a minute, 
this happened. Um, and maybe, maybe your kid was the initial aggressor and the other person came back and just pummeled him and really did some damage or, or whatever the case may be. Um, but, but the point is, is there a point in time, do you think where, where th- they should go seek a protective order or they should try to get criminal charges brought against someone? Um, and I, and I think the answer is, well, sure, Absolutely. but we're really not talking about that sort of situation. This is the schoolyard or school bus fighting, you know, the pop in the face, the black eye, maybe bloody nose, the maybe wrestling, whatever that is. Yeah, and, and you got to realize most fights in school are pretty minimal. Um, very rarely do two kids square off and just duke it out for 45 minutes. It's hair pulling and kicking and wrestling and all these things. But, again, I know they're serious ones. And, again, we always get kind of criticized on these, like, you guys aren't protecting people, and we hear that a lot. But right. that's not what we're trying to do here. What we're trying to do, we understand that if you're a victim of somebody bullying you or punching you or you're scared to go to school, yes, get a protective order. I'll represent you. No problem. I mean, I've done it. I've gotten protective orders for people. So, that, And there are times sure. when it's legitimate. There's time when it's legitimate to go take out charges. What I'm saying, though, is most people don't understand where we are in society and the risk all this stuff plays in and how it can go south and how, when it does, you're the person who they're coming after, how important it is to, one, know why you did what you did, two, Come and see us because you need a lawyer and you don't need to talk to anybody, which was three. Do not talk about it because it's just going to end up snowballing into a bad situation. And don't text the kid like <laughs> evening and Snapchat him and say, I got you, whatever. You know, and that's the other thing. Or we, leave a voicemail or call somebody or get on Discord and tell the whole group Or seven chat people about it, vid- or, videoed it and they sent it to you and you sent it to him. I'll beat your ass. Boy, uh, you know, I mean, stupid. <laughs> we've got to get off this life of social media because it's killing our kids. But more importantly, it's that whole thing of there's evidence everywhere. Well, since we have to deal with it, we, and, and well, wait a minute, the cameras on the buses, it's not just the wheels on the bus anymore. Now it's just, it's, (laughs) it's cameras too. And you know, from what my middle schooler would tell you is that the, the bus driver, is focused on driving, and I mean, it could be World War Three in the back, and bus driver's not doing much about it. And even though there's a recording of these bus rides, not much is happening. I mean, my my child will tell you that she has watched these um, incidents occur over and over, day after day, and it's nobody's getting bloodied or anything like that. But it's you know, water in the face, it's a smack, it's a it's yeah. the awful, awful, colorful language. And they're not doing anything about it, right? So it's we have, it, and like she said, I don't blame the bus drivers because they have to drive that bus and they're looking for I'd somebody. I'd rather cross, them get home safe. <laughs> I, 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 they're, somebody's crossing across in front of them, a car is not paying attention, driving as they're texting, driving past them, all mm-hmm. those things that happen we see every day. So I get it. Um, but there's also just a real world element of growing up that these things are gonna, these rubs sometimes are gonna happen and we gotta prepare our kids. To know the consequences of their action. And then when they choose a consequence or they choose an action, they know where it's going to lead. And at least they're doing it. I have sure. so many kids that said, I never knew this. I would be here. I never understood this. And my thing is, we need to we need to more than ever arm our kids with truth and the reality. Because people aren't living in reality anymore, I don't think, in certain areas. And they just think, well, you know, it's okay. Just go ahead and punch him back as hard as you can, knock his out, knock him out, and well, maybe, but but you may suffer a consequence you didn't anticipate, and then you're going to call us, and that's okay. Again, we're not advocating you become a doormat. We're advocating if somebody's doing something, you stand up, and say that's not okay, and if you keeps on, you get the help you need. I mean, all those things are important. Well, but we're not advocating excessive force either, no. and you know, the, I mean, part of self defense is the last best chance to get away, right? Um, But that's a whole nother podcast. So it's really important when your child is is in trouble at school because they've gotten in a fight at school, number one, you maybe need to assess whether this is a bullying situation because that's that's really going to carry that entire conversation into a different place. But also you need to know, I mean, who was the aggressor, what happened, and be prepared that even if your child was not the aggressor, they may be suspended, expelled, 
which by the way is a whole nother process that that needs to be addressed if your child was not the aggressor and was and receiving uh, excessive punishment from the school because of it i mean there's just so many pieces that really can fall out from this so call get some help with uh, with navigating some of this don't I, I wouldn't say just take an expulsion uh and and exactly. if you've got a protective order or need a protective order because of how extreme this was or if they're if your child is facing juvenile assault and battery or your child needs to maybe consider pressing charges against another child for juvenile assault and battery. These are all things that you really need, I would say, attorney advice about. You really need to talk to people who know what the law is and then explain to you what the ramifications on both sides of, of that coin will be. Yeah, and I, I want to say one more thing because it's really important and I hear it all the time from parents who watch our podcast and go, I've sto totally stopped doing what I used to do, which is if you get in trouble with school, you go tell them the truth. And again, I... I don't advocate for you to lie ever. It's not about lying. It's not about hiding. It's not. I'm not saying avoid the law. What I'm saying is there's a process that needs to be followed, and that process is you have the right not to self-incriminate yourself, and you shouldn't do that because a lot of times you're saying things that you have no idea what you're saying, and they're only hurting you when you can still be guilty but handle it in a way that is right for the situation. Sure. And bring forth the information that's necessary through an attorney or through whatever process. But you going on and blabbing and trying to weasel your way out of it and all those kind of things, don't, it just doesn't work. You know, maybe your friend's a good talker and he got out of one, but you're probably not. So, you know, <laughs> I say that with all due, due respect, man. Just trust us. We see this all the time. So, number one, if you've been in a fight or some kind of situation and the school's addressed it, you might expect charges to come. Even if you don't, if you got expelled and you don't feel you're righteously done or you're the you're the person being bullied or hurt, come talk to somebody. We we've been doing juvenile law for a long time. So we want to help. But don't just think you parents don't think you can you know the answers just because you've been around a long time because quite frankly, if I wasn't a lawyer, I don't think I'd know the answers because I'm always amazed when I go into court and what somehow things are changed and you're like, "Whoa, we're really going down a slippery slope so right. please don't talk until you've talked to somebody who can give you good advice right good legal advice not not dr google legal advice yeah. so we appreciate you checking us out look for our other podcasts uh, on our website at cclawva.com and look for additional podcasts as they're coming out uh, most of the time it's weekly sometimes a little more often than that but we look forward to uh, checking out uh, any comments that you have or maybe even addressing topics that that you'd like to hear about uh, but like and subscribe wherever you listen to your podcasts thank you have a good day we hope you've enjoyed this episode of What to Do When. For more episodes, be sure to subscribe to our podcast, and we encourage you to check our archives to listen to previous topics. Tune in next week for a new episode and some fresh perspective from Kreiser Cardani.